The topic of this video is the synagogue of Satan. As one can already tell, I do not think very highly of modern Judaism. This is somewhat of an understatement, as I know very well what this religion is guilty of. However, I do sympathize with anyone born into this religion. I know many are not very zealous about its core beliefs, and they would consider themselves not very religious. As per usual, the religion and the perpetrators of it are the only ones in this discussion that I consider to be my enemy. The center focal of this video is to expose many of the evils that people are largely aware and unaware of. My intention is to mostly warn fellow Christians that the modern Jews are not God's people. To this crowd of supporters, I strongly recommend to leave any church that may have told you that the Jews are still God's people. Any church that does this should immediately be put under suspicion of receiving funding from the modern Jews. It would surprise you to see that this indeed does happen. Of course, many churches preach what they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, so this shouldn't be much of a surprise. Do not be fooled into sending any money to Jewish organizations, as they can in no wise be any of the extent of the imagination be considered a good cause. Much of the atrocious actions of the Jewish religion has been concealed along with many of their beliefs. Typically only the rabbis are familiar with the entire religion as they have the privilege of reading the so-called Most Holy Kabbalah. Discussing this topic could be considered very dangerous for a variety of reasons but I will never censor any topic because we are asked to fear no one but God. Can one still be afraid? Yes, but as long as you do not let fear dictate your actions, you are doing better than most. To begin the heart of this discussion, let us look at the Bible for answers concerning this mysterious and rather abstruse topic. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 reads, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. There is a lot of subject material to break down here, but this is the first time of two times that the Bible uses the phrase synagogue of Satan to describe the modern Christ-rejecting Jews. What is interesting to hear is that it is considered blasphemy as they call themselves Jews when they are Luciferians, as the Bible suggests here. If we go to Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 and 9, it reads, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth, I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. The person speaking here is Jesus. We know this from Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 which reads, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess the name before my Father and before his angels. Here we can clearly see the Son is the person speaking in this chapter. It can additionally be seen that Christ is the judge but also the justifier those who do not believe on christ should know that acts chapter 4 verse 12 states neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved as i've said many times before this is the case returning to revelation chapter 3 verses 7 to 9 we can know that it is god the father saying what is said unto the church in Philadelphia, where they have not denied his name. What is interesting is how the modern Jews are mentioned directly afterward, which shows how those who reject Jesus Christ reject God the Father as well. 
John chapter 13 verse 20 supports this in saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. These verses additionally support that God exists in three separate persons, as some propose a doctrine that is referred to as modalism, which falsely claims that God just puts on a new hat for each role. However, we can clearly see that God, the Father, and the Son are separate. Each has their own will, even though Christ does God the Father's will. What is interesting is that God will make it clear when Judgment Day arrives that God has loved us and that he never knew those of the Christ-rejecting Jews. What makes the modern so-called Jews so interesting is that they do not simply just believe in the Old Testament and not Jesus. This is a common lie that is told. The Bible reads in John chapter 5 verse 46, For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. What is additionally interesting is how Moses did see Jesus when he was leading God's people, the real Jews. Exodus chapter 33 verse 11 reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. This shows to people that Christ was in the beginning with God. John chapter 1 describes this in great detail. So it just goes to show that God experiences time differently than man. How do we know that this is Christ, you ask? Well, God the Father says in Exodus chapter 33, verse 20, and he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. This shows that the person's face that Moses saw and spoke with was that of Jesus Christ. And this dispels the doctrine of modalism. The Trinity is real. So we can conclude after looking at John chapter 5 verse 46 that the modern Jews do not believe in the laws of Moses just like they do not believe in Christ. Because if they did, they would all be Christian. As the entire Old Testament points to Christ, the Jews are followers of Satan. So in biblically determining the modern so-called Jews are Satanists, it is important to know the qualities of Satanists. Again, I'm mostly referring to the rabbis and perpetuators of this satanic religion. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 reads, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This shows that Satanists run this world, so they can typically be found in positions of power. Jesus had this to say about the Satanist Jews in John chapter 8, verses 44 to 45. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. This goes to show that the Satanist Jews do not embrace the truth and they respect their father, the devil. These verses also tell us a lot of what we need to know. It shows that God attributes the death of Adam and Eve to Satan as he is called a murderer from the beginning. He, of course, introduces man to sin. As the saying goes, like father, like son. Just as we try to take on the qualities of the true God, Satanists try to take on the qualities of their so-called God, the devil. At this point, I know much of what has been discussed is only biblical, but know that God has put everything that we need to know about the wiles of the devil in the Bible. Have confidence in that. Have confidence that in the end, they will not have the victory. Addressing the exclusive beliefs of the satanic Jewish religion I will briefly describe the three books which they are said to respect. However, hearing how each is referred to will be sufficient to understand the hierarchy. 
The first level is the Torah. They have zero respect for this book as they have zero respect for God. The second level is the Holy Talmud. Many are not very familiar with it, but it is the most commonly known. The final level, and the most wicked of all, would be the Most Holy Kabbalah, which is no joke the pinnacle satanic book in the world which the rabbis use. Historically, these rabbis would only train a single apprentice in its teachings, but they have recently opened the knowledge of it to other Satanists of the other factions that they have. This brings us to the culminating and somewhat controversial topic of their relations with secret societies. The term secret society carries a lot of baggage with it, and I will tackle the subject later on, but for now I will briefly address they are well connected in this area, just like the Catholic Church. It is a spider web of evil. You can't see it, but there's connections everywhere with various groups all over the globe. The only notable Satanic Jewish secret society is known as the Benai Barith. These Jews and others like them can sometimes be referred to as Kabbalists. The reason for this is they believe and know the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah discusses many things the Bible does, but paints Satan as the hero like in Genesis. They claim that Satan freed man instead of murdered man. Their view is the complete reverse of what us Christians believe, and for this reason they make me very sick. There certainly is so much to discuss concerning the Rothschilds, among much else. But that will have to wait for another day. Feel free to do some reading into any of these subjects I mentioned for yourselves, but always keep in mind to read the Bible daily if possible. If this subject was found to be interesting and you would like to know more, like the video and leave a comment to let me know. I hope I was able to shine some light on this organization and I hope this lays a good groundwork for any future discussions. As always, God bless all that seek after the truth.